Warning, the following video contains graphic images that may not be suitable for some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. In other words, you know the title of the video, you know what you clicked on, you get to the end of this video when you're upset or you're disgusted or anything like that, you got no one to blame but yourself. Alright, so first and foremost, most people don't seem to understand how I was able to be inside of a bailing machine in the first place, because most people, when they hear about a bailer, they think of a vertical bailer, like the ones in the back of a grocery store or whatnot. But I work on a heavy duty recycling bailer for like a recycling plant. So it was a horizontal bailer. This is an actual picture of the machine itself that I used to run. Um, I would go up those stairs and then turn right and go into that little control room. This is a view of inside the control room. Um, those broken down cardboard boxes on the floor were actually put there by the police to cover up the pool of blood that I left behind so that they could then do the rest of the report and not be tracking blood all over the place. But normally there was just a floor there and then a chair. Um, this is a view of the ram and then also obviously the blades. Those are the blades that took my leg off. Um, you can see some of the blood uh, actually still on the ram and definitely on the blades. Uh, the way that this worked was I would push a button and trash would drop down on top of the ram. You can kind of see some of it right there. Um, the ram would then be backed up. Uh, right now it's partially backed up, but it would be backed up all the way. And then like this big metal squeegee knocked whatever trash was on top of the ram down into the very bottom. And then the ram would be moved forward to compact it underneath the blades. And anything still above the ram, like sticking up, would get cut by those blades. Um, my leg was caught by the ram and pushed underneath those blades and since the rest of me was sticking up above the ram as I was on top of the ram, uh, it severed my leg right there. This is a more zoomed in picture. It's the same picture, just a little bit closer. Um, and you can see those blades are very, very blunt and dull. They're not sharp at all. They hadn't been replaced in a long time, uh, proven by all the buildup on top of the blades. Um, so it wasn't a clean cut, it was a very painful, crushing, breaking cut. Um, more like when you take a stick and you put it you know, up against your leg to break the stick, like if you're doing yard work. It was kind of like that, except my leg was the stick. Um, this is the top of the ram, like I was saying, all the trash sits on top of the ram. Um, this was more of my blood. Uh, that big piece of cardboard that bent over with the predominant amount of blood on it, was the actual piece of cardboard that my foot was pinned up against. Um, however, what's remaining right there is what was still above the ram and was cut. Um, my leg was kind of side by side with that piece of cardboard. So, um, And there's the chair. Uh, the first responders threw it into the machine uh, to get it out of the way, as well as apparently you know, a pair of gloves. Um, but. Otherwise, all that stuff was material that was actually kind of on top of at the time of my amputation. And uh, now we're about to get to some really, really graphic images. So one last warning to you. Um, if you do not want to see graphic images, please just exit this video now. I have a lot of other videos that you could watch. Um, so here we go. This is my foot. It was actually still inside of the work boot when it was recovered by the police. Um, it was pretty intact except for obviously the amputated bit. I mean, it, the fact that it itself was amputated, I mean. Um, and then uh, that gash in the heel. Uh, I think the description of that gash is actually going to be more gruesome than the actual picture. Um, that gash was caused if you've ever had a bag of potato chips and you squeeze it really tight on the bottom and eventually the top bursts and all the chips fly out, um, before my leg was severed, my foot was kind of crushed. And the reason it's in such good shape is because I had a heavy duty industrial you know, steel toed work boot around the foot. But you can see severe bruising. My foot was crushed. Almost all the, f the bones were broken. Um, I felt all of that prior to my leg actually, or my foot actually eventually getting amputated. Um, I mean, it all happened in a matter of maybe a second and a half, but I felt the ram crush my foot and all the bones in it all the way up to the ankle, at which point it just severed it. 
Um, in the meantime, though, as it was crushing my foot, all the fluids and just stuff inside of my foot needed somewhere to go. So it was eventually blew a hole in the back of my heel and everything shot out. It was basically like somebody vice gripped my foot to the point that everything inside of it shot out of the back of it. At which point, then my foot, about maybe a half a second later, ultimately became amputated. Now, um, here's another view of the foot. You can see again, the way the heel looks compared to the rest of it is because it, uh, you know, all my fluids in my foot blew out of the back of my heel. Um, again, though, you can see the purple, that's the bruising. My foot was severely bruised because it wasn't just amputated. Like I said, the, the baler kind of rolled my foot and broke every bone in my foot. Maybe not my toes or something, you know, but it broke my foot, um, crushed it completely before the foot itself was then severed. Um, in my video, particularly the uh, 911 call, um, I say, you know, amputated leg, and then in all my videos, I'm a right leg amputee. I never say right foot. I, I, you know, a lot of people don't seem to understand. In your 911 call, you say, you know, I lost my, my you know, foot was amputated at the ankle, etc., etc. How can you call it, you know, a chilly 911 call amputated leg, not amputated foot? That's because um, after I arrived in the hospital and they did my emergency surgery to kind of salvage me, um, they had to take off this additional amount of my leg. Um, it brought it from the ankle all the way up to about five inches below my knee. Um, they had to do that because the, the amputation wasn't an exact cut because like I showed you, the blades were jagged and blunt and dull. So rather than actually cutting my foot off, it kind of snapped my foot off. So it snapped the bone at a jagged angle about a good three inches farther up from where my ankle was. Um, so they had to come up above the jagged cut, and then they also had to take an extra inch or so so that they have loose skin to fold up on the knee. All in all, you can see how much of my leg was also amputated um, alongside the foot. And then yes, that is actually some skin hanging off of the leg. Um, all of that was missing when I came out of surgery. It was a little bit of a shock. I mean, I was already you know, obviously a little bit of a shock to have lost my leg, I mean my foot, and in such a grotesque manner, but at least when I went into surgery, that was all that was missing, and uh, when I came out of surgery, as soon as I pulled the blanket back and looked at my, you know, my legs, my leg, I should, I don't know, <laughs> as soon as I pulled the blanket back and looked, I was just completely blown away because I went in with a missing foot, and I came out pretty much missing my entire leg up to the knee. Um, but yeah, there's some more, you can kind of see the bone sticking out of the top of the foot and just, you know, <laughs> pictures that describe a lot. Um, what do they say pictures are worth a thousand words? Um, I really don't have any words to describe that. It's, you know, interesting myself to be looking at it because I'm, uh, I'm kind of struggling for words right now because it's hard for me to even stomach these images. Um, it's hard to look at. You know, I can't even really listen to my own 911 call without having some problems. But these pictures, you watching this video, you know, I'm sure these pictures are probably gross to you, but that's about it. To me, these pictures are just, there's no word. Um, lastly, you know, there's a final shot to show everything. Um, so yeah, this is everything that I lost. And this is the reason that when I say, you know, in the 911 call that my leg was amputated at the ankle, I say my foot was amputated, etc, etc. But yet in other videos I claim to be a right leg amputee. And if you see the pictures and videos, I'm in a prosthetic all the way up to my knee. Um, and that's why in the 911 call I describe it as, you know, 911 call amputated leg. Because more than just the foot ultimately ended up being lost. But, uh, so there you go.